Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button and the share button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man. And welcome to Wednesday's edition of the DC Multiverse Daily exclusive. Right now, Warner Media are having discussions and considering releasing Wonder Woman 84 on video on demand. No, not on HBO Max like Grace the Wrong Randolph suggested yesterday. Encouraging people to watch something on HBO Max in the hint or the hope that um, Wonder Woman 84 could go on HBO Max. Let me tell you why. Wonder Woman 84, well, 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 it, 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 there's, no, there's no money in it. You know, Wonder Woman 84 is a movie pre-COVID that could have grossed 800 to a billion dollars on the global market. What, and you know, because let's not forget that HBO Max isn't even a global streaming service. It's barely been released anywhere apart from America, Canada, and a couple of other territories, right? So I suppose you could release it in North America on HBO Max and then maybe have it on VOD across the world as well as release it in cinemas. You could, and then whatever cinemas are still open can house this movie. I think that may be the plan. So you could have it on HBO Max in America. That could, that would definitely bring the subscriptions up. You could do that VOD across the world. Um, so that might be a plan. But I don't think solely on HBO Max. There's, there's no way. And I think there are discussions right now. And I think that's why the date hasn't, hasn't, been, hasn't changed. Because let's be honest, the Batman's not out to next year. So you can't say, well, they're not touching that yet because it is, it's not till December. Now, I said that yesterday, but I actually think now that there's a good chance of not only Wonder Woman 84 not uh, maybe um, going on HBO Max and VOD globally, but actually and Black Adam going VOD and HBO Max as well, because they postponed the date. That's interesting. No other film has postponed its date. They've given other dates. They've moved. But Black Adam hasn't moved. And I think that's interesting. And I also think it's interesting that James Gunn's The Suicide Squad hasn't moved either. Now, let's not forget, you know, the movie theatre model is it's got an uncertain future now. So it's very interesting that that film is stuck to where it's coming out. I think some very interesting things are happening. And I think although a lot of films have been moved to other dates, I think Warner Media are starting to realise that there is a paradigm shift here. Right. And that's where we bring in Zack Snyder's Justice League, um, where this is going to be the only film that's certainly going to be viewed. There's no doubt about Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think, in fact, uh, a lot of people are hinting that he's already started his additional photography. Very, very exciting. And we can only guess what things he's going to add. As I've said before, the cliffhangers at the end of each episode are something that Zach will tackle head on straight away. That's the thing he's doing first. Very, very important that he adds those sequences as well. But I think Zack Snyder's Justice League has become incredibly important to w Warner Media and this experiment, whether... To them, VOD is worth it. Now, we know common sense says that if you're sitting at home and you can watch James Gunn's The Suicide Squad by pressing a button, why, why would the amounts of people who would, would view it at home be different to who would get out, put a coat and go to theatres? It doesn't make sense, does it? Still going to make the same amount of money, definitely, maybe even more if you still allow it to be released in certain theatres around the world. This is going to be the new model. Now, I must admit, there's a lot of VOD Nazis out there. There's a lot of people who are so resistant to the video on demand model because they want to pr protect the cinema chains and the cinematic experience. And I understand that. I want to protect the cinematic experience. But we're in a situation now that unavoidably, you know, the amount of money pre-COVID they could make they can't make that now. And so I can exclusively tell you that there are discussions for Wonder Woman 84 to definitely go VOD. 
Maybe, I did dismiss what Grace Randolph was saying on the top of the show, but maybe she's right. Maybe in North America, it would go on HBO Max, VOD across the world, and cinema releases where possible in a variety of territories. I think that's the kind of discussions they're having right now. And so I've heard this, and I think this is why Wonder Woman 84 hasn't moved yet, because I think it will be in cinemas in December where they can, but definitely VOD, maybe HBO Max. So do look out for that. But we were talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. And as I say, this is very, very important to the paradigm shift because you're going to see records being broken next year. When um, HBO Max launched, and remember, we had the knowledge that Zack Snyder's Justice League was going to be on the streaming service next year. That had a leap in subscriptions. Now, nowhere near what Disney Plus were doing, but I believe if the Friends reunion actually hit when it was supposed to hit HBO Max, I think it would have equaled the subscriptions of Disney Plus because a Friends reunion is as big as having a Star Wars show or like The Mandalorian. I think it's that big. Friends was, a, you know, an era-defining sitcom. And actually, Friends was beyond a sitcom, but this is, isn't a, a Friends video, of course. So I think what you're going to see as we get closer and closer to the date of release for Zack Snyder's Justice League, I think it's going to... I think the views on this miniseries are going to break records. And I think HBO Max, once they actually, you've got to see this. It's very clever, actually, not releasing, not announcing the release date yet. Because once they announce the release date, people will know when it's going to hit. And the closer we get to that release date, it's a bit like when people pre-order cinema tickets. When, when, the, when you're allowed, you know, when the date hits, when they say, come and get your tickets now. And this is the same thing with HBO Max announcing a release date for Zack Snyder's Justice League. When they do, that's when subscriptions will go really, really high. But the closer we get to that release date, the more subscribers will come in for HBO Max. Now, we don't know if HBO Max will be global by the release date. That's maybe why they haven't announced the release date. They may not even know the release date. Maybe they're waiting till they actually go global. So if they go global, it's even a bigger profit for them, but they they may be under the situation where they will have to do deals with Netflix, um, other kind of streaming services across the world, so people can have access to Zack Snyder's Justice League. But whether HBO Max is global or not, this is going to be the most viewed, most streaming event of all time, and they are going to beat Disney Plus uh, uh, Disney Plus's subscriber level because. This is the most anticipated streaming project of all time. And I've explained to you why, because it doesn't matter if you hate Snyder, love Snyder, hate the idea of Zack Snyder finally showing us his version of Justice League. You are intrigued and you will want to subscribe and you will want to watch this movie. There is no question about that. So I think this is where the paradigm shift is, because once Zack Snyder's Justice League does the numbers, for, uh, for HBO Max and Warner Media that they want. Then they change their mentality towards video on demand. All of a sudden, they know the numbers are there if you get the hype train right. And the hype train for Zack Snyder's Justice League has been there ever since we've been fighting for the release of this film. And it's captured people's intrigue. And, you know, it's captured people's imagination wondering what this film's going to be. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? It's a bit like a sporting event, a big, you know, high profile sporting event like the Super Bowl. People watch it because it's an event, because everyone's talking about it. Half the people who watch the Super Bowl don't even understand what American football is. And there'll be people watching this film who don't understand DC Comics, who don't understand what the fuss is about. But they're going to watch out of intrigue. And this is what you call a paradigm shift. Because once that happens, once they get these record-breaking numbers for this one event, and we've seen what's going on with The Boys now. The Boys is challenging Netflix. The only thing on Prime Video or any other streaming service that's actually challenging Netflix's number numbers. Netflix is so dominant. And, they, and The Boys is the only thing that's challenging Netflix. Now, I've never seen The Boys before. I'm very tempted to binge the... First two seasons, I think the finale of The Boys drops soon. 
And I mean, if I watch the boys and I like it, I'll definitely be talking about that here on Big Mouth, maybe in separate videos, because everyone tells me it's one of the most amazing superhero things that's ever been done when we're, we're talking about movies or TV. So I'm definitely interested in, in checking that out. But when we go back to the paradigm shift, it's all on, it's all of, it's fun, isn't it? It doesn't exist. Zack Snyder is this. The people were calling him Hack Snyder. You're not going to get the Snyder Cut. Snyder's done. Now, all of a sudden, potentially, Zack Snyder's Justice League could be the only DC film we see in 2021. That's unprecedented. I don't think that's 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 the case. I think what's going to happen, either we're going to get a vaccine to this pandemic and everything will be all right, or some things will shift to VOD. Because all these dates you're seeing, they're placeholders. They're not certain dates. And I've always said this to you, haven't I? So uh, I think what we are seeing is a paradigm shift. And Zack Snyder's Justice League is standing on top of the cliff at the beginning of this paradigm shift. Because I have no doubt in my mind the kind of numbers and viewings and subs this film is going to bring to HBO Max is something we haven't seen the likes of before. So it's amazing. And this is all on Zack Snyder. This is all about Zack Snyder. Everyone is going to come in and watch this movie and it's going to change everything. And they're going to want to what they get, you know, HBO Max and Warner Media are going to want Zack to do more of his Snyderverse. And for fans of that, like us, it's an amazing turnaround seeing what happened when, um, when they weren't embracing Zack and we thought they were going to leave Zack behind. All of a sudden, Zack Snyder is the industry's only hope. And also, he's an experiment. He's an experiment to see if it's time to embrace VOD. You know my opinion. I think it is absolutely time to embrace VOD. But I want to know what you think. Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DC Multiverse Daily. See you again soon.